Hey, what's up guys, it's Fruity, and welcome back to the second episode of the Rolling Cutter Only Run of the original Mega Man. In the previous episode, uh, I celebrated my second anniversary of the first time I played this game by taking down Cut Man and Guts Man, and boy, that was a whole lot of fun. But this time, things are going to get just a little bit more ridiculous as I go to take on Iceman, the hardest stage out of the six. Oh boy. Yep, this one's pretty painful for anyone who's familiar with this game. So, let's go. Ooh, he might look short and stubby and not very threatening, but Iceman's a toughie. He's a toughie, alright? So, for starters, as we come down the stage, switching to our weapon, and I'm on zero lives. I think I want to suicide then. Get game over. But first thing you'll notice is there are palm trees in the background. What is up with the palm trees? Like, we're supposed to be, like, in a really cold place, aren't we? I think it's supposed to be that Iceman has frozen over a tropical region, and that's why there's palm trees. I've always found it to be one of those sort of funny little charming things about the game, just having palm trees in the ice stage. Come on, finish me already. Finish me! There we go. So this is a little strategy you learn from playing Mega Man. If you go into a stage with zero lives, often you should just get a game over and then continue, because that way, when you touch back down in the stage... There you go, I've got my lives back. Two lives. Lucky me. Let's get our rolling cutter out again, and take on these guys properly. They're called Crazy Razies, I believe. You have to hit them in the eyes to take them down in one hit. If you hit their body, then they'll go spastic and start whizzing around everywhere trying to hit you. Whoa, whoa. Like that. No. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Jeez. So this stage is challenging, A, because there's lots of tough enemy patterns, and B, because there's a lot of tough platforming challenges coming up a little later in the stage. Luckily, the rolling cutter can actually kill these little uh, spines that run along the ground, so that makes things a bit easier, actually. Although it doesn't do a very good job of reaching them down there. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> oh yeah, and we are underwater. Um, you can't jump any higher underwater in Mega Man 1. That's a thing they introduced in the second game onwards that becomes a staple, that Mega Man can jump higher in water for some reason. But there's only a couple of times in the game where there is water, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, this is very good at taking out them octopus batteries, isn't it? <laughs> they got a little shoot down here, and this is where we get introduced to one of the famous things about Mega Man. The disappearing blocks! also known as Yoku Blocks. Uh, once you've memorized the pattern though, they're easy. See? <laughs> Completely memorized. I got this. I got this, baby. <laughs> oh, alright. Uh, ah, come on. I've got to show this off. You can scroll that enemy off by doing that. See? He disappeared. Uh, that's pretty hilarious. So, uh, yep, as you can see, once you've learnt the disappearing block patterns, they are not hard at all. However, this bit is hard. These enemies are called footholders, and they are terrible, as you can see. They are, well, pretty much the worst enemy in Mega Man history, and I mean that, like, objectively. Like, they're so terrible. For starters, they're just a terrible idea, but they're glitchy as well. Because, like, they're completely random. There is no rhyme or reason to where they move. So, for starters, that's just stupid, because then you have to survive for longer flying across that pit on top of them. And secondly, they're glitchy, and if they hit you, sometimes you can just phase straight through them, which is, uh, pretty stupid. It's like, like, just how terrible footholders are. It's practically a meme, like, a meme among the fandom, like, footholders are that terrible. They're just, ugh. At least it's predictable when they change directions. Um, whenever they shoot, they'll change directions. But other than that, there's really no pattern to what these guys do. You've pretty much just got to hope for the best. Uh, there is a way of getting past this section much easier with a particular power-up. But I don't have that power-up, and I'm trying to do this using just the rolling cutter. No, no power-ups, so no other power-ups. And there we go, just made it. That was really lucky. Sometimes you can just get completely screwed and they'll just stay down the bottom the entire time and just won't let you go up. It's really ridiculous. At least they're generous enough to give you a life and some health there. Unfortunately, as we go into the next room... Whoa, big eye's back. He wants his uh, claim. And he got his claim. Jeez. I hate you, big eye. Why you do this to me? Uh, 
But there you go, the end of the stage. Now uh, these enemies are called Pengs, by the way. Short for Penguin, of course. A penguin with a propeller on its nose. Dr. Wily, you are a genius. I'm sorry, but you are a genius. <laughs> Alright, here we go, Iceman. Now, if I'm not much mistaken, he should actually take two damage to the rolling cutter, but that's not gonna help me because Iceman does so much damage to you. If you don't dodge his shots anyway. It's harder than it looks to dodge this stuff. As you can see, I just got hit, and you can see how much damage that did to me. Yes, that is not an illusion. Iceman's Ice Slasher really does that much damage to you. Come on. Kill him. No! I was close. Iceman probably has, like, the simplest pattern of any Robot Master in Mega Man history. But the problem is, it's really tight to dodge his attacks, and they do so much damage to you. Like, it's a three-hit kill, even if you're on full health. So... Oh, jeez, I'm doing so bad. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Alright, whatever. We're going in with, like, half health. Great job. Um, but yeah, just dodging the Ice Slasher. It's tough, and the fact that this weapon has a pretty limited range doesn't help, because I have to get in quite close to him. Which isn't the case if I was just doing a regular Buster run. I'll go get away from him. At least I hit him twice with that one. Okay, come on. Oh, that was like one frame of getting hit there. Oh boy. Oh god, this could be close. This could be close. Come on, yes! There we go, Iceman down. Whew, that was pretty intense, I must admit. Jeez. Uh, I didn't really talk about the music. I guess I mentioned it last time, but Iceman's theme, pretty nice and catchy. Uh, not one of my favorites, though. It's grown on me since I first played the game, though. It's a um, really catchy theme to just, like, sing along with if, if you're in the mood. But now we're heading into Bomb Man, and I'm quite excited about this, because Bomb Man is my favorite stage in the game. I love Bomb Man's stage. Great music, too. It's one of those four themes, which are all contenders for the best. And best boss fight in the game, too. Bomb Man's got really good boss fight to him, so... I like everything about Bomb Man, except his design. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really much of a fan of Bomb Man's design, to be honest. Now we get one of the best backgrounds in Mega Man history. The Electronic Lollipops. Oh my god, I love the Electronic Lollipops. Let me eat them, please let me eat them. Look, Mega Man's mouth is open when he jumps. That's because he wants to eat the Lollipops. Give him, give him, give him, give him, give him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love this stage aesthetically. I love it musically. I love the gameplay. I love the boss fight. Everything about this stage works really well for me. It's also not a bad stage for first, too. It's not too hard for a first-time player. The uh, music also has a nice, you know, starting out on your adventure vibe. It's very, very exciting in a way. So, it's a good first stage. Alright. Eh, there we go. I like how a lot of enemies go down in one hit to the rolling cutter. It's very useful. <laughs> And the stage also has quite a nice flow to it. Another reason why I enjoy it. Now, I'm not sure how to handle this. Yep, I got hit. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I might as well go down for that health. I'll probably just get hit more times and not make it worth it at all. But I want to see if I can effectively defeat these enemies. Okay. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Alright, that could have gone worse. <laughs> And now we get introduced to another pretty iconic enemy, Sniper Joe, appears in almost every Mega Man game in different incarnations. In this game, this game is probably his best incarnation actually, he's pretty random, but not so random that it's annoying, like you have enough reaction time to when he um, puts away his shield and goes to fire, it's um, almost like a one-on-one -on -one duel between you and him, I really, I really like it, one of my favourite enemies in the game. Ooh, yeah. And watch out for these killer bullets. They look a bit like bullet bills from Mario, that's what everyone says. No, they're called killer bullets. Alright. Uh, a bit of a, an example of screen reuse here. This is a screen we saw earlier in the stage, but it has different enemies this time. Um, they had to reuse some screens in order to save space on the uh, game cartridge. That's um, somewhat obvious in a few of the stages. Um, Mostly just in this game. Later Mega Man games, they don't really reuse screen layouts because I guess they had more space to work with on the cartridge. Uh, yeah, you gotta be tough with that bit. Um, if you fall on death spikes, even if you have invulnerability frames, it's always death. Uh, the invulnerability frames won't save you in this game. They do in later games. 
That's uh, one of the things that adds to making this game a bit less refined than later Mega Man games. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take out Sniper Joe here. I don't have to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. There we go. Rolling Cutter's actually really effective against him. I didn't know it was that effective. Oh yeah, and the life respawns, but you can't really get back up there, so it doesn't really help you. That's probably another reason why there's less lives and power-ups in this game compared to later ones, because they respawn if you um, go off screen, which isn't the case in later Mega Man games. So they deliberately made the game harder just because they couldn't fix a glitch or a mechanic. They couldn't fix, I don't know, again, one of the poorer parts of the game, really. But there's a the boss corridor. And this one is unique, because you actually go down the boss corridor instead of to the right. And when I say unique, I don't just mean for this game, I mean Bomb Man is literally the only robot master in the entire series that you actually descend into his boss room, which is really awesome. There are some, like, non-robot master bosses in later games that are like that, but he's the only actual robot master that, that has this. So let's see how effective this is. Two damage, nice, like it. So Bomb Man's pattern's pretty simple, but it's uh, it's good fun. He feels like a less spazzy version of Cup Man, in all honesty. He jumps around a bit. He doesn't like to be close to you. If you um get close to him, he'll usually start jumping to the other side of the screen. Ah uh, dear. Oh, yep. Okay. Oh, the cutter despawned because it went off screen. Yeah, I'm gonna try and counterattack him. So whenever he's done throwing bombs, I'll try and hit him like there. Uh, you can always jump to avoid the blast radius of the bombs, if even if they're really close to you. So that's handy. Oh, I died. I wasn't paying enough attention, I guess. Please, yes, not game over. I was just, just going to say, please don't be game over. Yeah, I've got life left. Yeah, I picked up that one um, just before the gate, didn't I? Alright. And down we go. Let's give this another crack. I have full health this time, so should be a bit easier. I don't like how you can't run for a little bit after you shoot the rolling cutter, like half a second or so. I guess that's part of, like, the mechanics of the weapon, like that's intended to make it a, not quite as powerful as you'd hope it would be, but that's one of those, like, things that I find quite annoying, not being able to run after shooting a weapon. Like, I don't know. They could have found some other way, maybe, of making the weapon less powerful. They almost got him. Eh, die bomb man. There we go. See, not a hard boss, but a fun one. Uh, and yeah, a good first stage to start with, in all honesty. It's not too hard. But uh, with that, there we go. Robot Master 005 Iceman and 006 Bomb Man have been defeated. There are only two left before they're moving on to the final stages of the game. But we'll have to see what those two stages are like in the next video. Oh, having to wait. Sorry, guys. But I would like to wrap things up now. <sighs> well, then, I'll catch you guys next time. This is Fruity, signing off.